The last time Corey Nielsen coached the Nottingham Panthers, John Armstrong brought his tenure to an end by causing pandemonium in Orange. Now he's back, taking over from Gary Graham and tasked with injecting some life into a season that sees them just four points off the bottom of the table. Sheffield split the series with Belfast and the team is unchanged from last Sunday's defeat, but the forward lines have been altered again by Aaron Fox. Let's just hope the shooting is more accurate in the game than it was in the warm-up. The crowd has settled in and we are ready for this one. The first face-off comes back the way of the Panthers and the Steelers force a turnover. Dow gets onto it, the angle is tight and the first save by Dubot comes after just four seconds of the game. And then he covers up and the Steelers knifing straight through the middle. A direct route to goal and Dowd so well to knock it down. Dubot didn't really give him anything to shoot at. No one dominates on the dot as much as Matthew Myers. He's won 69 more face-offs than he's lost this season. He is not far off lapping quite a few of the rest of the field. <laughs> he uh, He's a very, well, he's one of the best face-off guys in the league. That's why he's so effective, especially on power play and PK. To be able to start with the puck makes a huge difference. Uh, oh, oh, that's a nasty hit. Skated into the back of Mason Mitchell. Yeah, that I'm not sure which player it is that's down. I have to say, but it didn't look good, to be honest. Oh, yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't aggressive or anything. It was Mace just kind of bracing himself. But that's a. Uh, that's a nasty, a nasty hit. I don't think he he hit him with an elbow or anything. It's just kind of his back that goes into his head talking to his teammates and the medical staff down there that's always a good sign and we hope for further good news in the coming hours and days Greenfield waits for this one and helps it on its way Christo trying to tip it past Ferrara and can't David Phillips will clear up Dowd ahead of him takes the pass well now he drives inside, good skating from Dowd, still he has it, stops and starts, around for McNally, Petgrave crashes forward, then kind of backed out of it, Steelers have turned it over, chance here, goal! Robert, it's Christo who's got it, He's found the five hole and put the Steelers in front. There you go, you just got to start wishing for some goals and then we'll get some. That's a great play by Danny to be patient with it, not force the pass over and, and obviously wait out the goalie. He's been a massive pickup for us. Six goals on the season for Danny Cristo. He had the option of the pass to McNally. Caruso took that away and kind of made up his mind for him. <laughs> Ooh. A little awkward for Greenfield, trying to reach across yeah. his body and didn't Greener, get it cleanly in the glove. Greener struggle with that one a little bit. Steelers still have it and Champini misses the chance to play it out of the zone. And uh, the sweeping play. That's good desperation by Champ just to just to get it over the, the blue line so the Panthers got to tag up. That's huge because they would have had a two-on-one right there. And it was Puffer who was about to break forward onto Greenfield's goal. Now here's Mitchell, no one option inside, he'll take it behind the net and try and hold up play. Panthers defenseman has lost his stick, it's Caruso who's just borrowed one from Ricci. Now Piche, who's got a rocket, there it is! Told you! It's a good shot by Papa Piche right there, proud dad. Loves a good slap shot, he's basically the happy Gilmore of the league. No Steelers defenseman takes more shots than Sebastian Piche. Not just shots, slap shots. He's a he's a slap shot first kind of player. And the Steelers have struck twice at the start of the second period, and the game has a very different feel. 22-27, just a minute and 20 between the two goals. We see it so often when the Steelers are at their best, they score in bunches. Piche. Schultz through traffic saved but not held Great. Dubot looks behind him but the puck's not there it was out front Great and shot McNally's shot Kevin. got blocked I want to say Raska might have blocked McNally's shot going he was behind Dubois and I think he might have been the one that, that kept that puck out 
Panthers have it again from the face-off. Levin looking back door, tipped away by Whistle. And the Steelers come forward. They do like a short-handed goal this season. Oh, safe made, but Dubose not held it, and he's come back off the post. Oh, Brandon Whistle. So nearly a scorer again against the Panthers. Oh, yeah. Weird shot because it hits his blocker, but then comes out, goes like right to his body. Obviously, must uh, must have went off the demon stick and kind of changed the angle of it. Welsh towards Gagnon, slaps it around. Greenfield out to settle it down. Schultz, good communication with his netminder, and that one has hit the official, which doesn't help the Steelers. Not sure the officials best please either. No. Here's Caruso. Sending it towards goal. It wasn't held on to by Greenfield. And that one's going to drop and it's going to be put in by the Panthers. The loose puck falls their way. And they have their way back into the game late in the second period. The Steelers are frustrated that a chance to clear didn't work out. And it's Walichka who chops down at the puck. And gets the Panthers on the board. A couple of very unfortunate bounces on that one. And that has got the Panthers fans noisy for the first time in a while. Uh, Myers on their team is really strong in the draw. I'm taking a lot against them this year and he always scrapes it on his back and uh, he's tough to beat so look for him to take the draw for not Nottingham. Looks as though Myers will be out there. Also Summers, Wilishka, Welsh, Hammond and Levin. The big guns are out for the Panthers and the net is empty. Face-off win by the Steelers. They'll send it around the boards but it won't exit the zone. Hammond gets it back to Welsh. And it's back with Mike Hammond. And the Panthers have equalised through Summers. Five seconds to go. Greenfield's crestfallen. And the Panthers fans are delirious. They've saved themselves right at the death. So many bodies in front on that shot. I'm not sure Greenfield saw it. I mean, we got to get a block there if we want to stop that one. They did a good job retrieving the puck after uh, Sheffield got the puck after the draw, but they moved it up to the point. Yeah, and it goes short side then. It's Newman. It's oh. a great glove save from Dubot, and he keeps the play alive as well. Goodness me. The defenseman played it pretty good on that two on one. Didn't have an option back door for Latar. Brassard. Backhand pass, and it gets deflected. We'll come to the near side wall where the Panthers pick it up through Hammond. Brassard checked down. Still Panthers possession in the offensive zone. Sorensen, can he get away from Latal? Petgrave checks him and the Steelers will get possession of this one. Long pass forward, taken in. Latal blasts it and Dubo saves it. Fifty seconds left in overtime. Defense! Terrific atmosphere in the Utilita Arena. Defense! Myers to Brady. Defense! Still Brady. His shot gets blocked and now the race is on. Can Brady get there? He just about gets his stick but Dowd reaches it and puts it just wide. And then the pass back into the slot only finds a Panthers player. Quick glance at the clock from Myers. 20 seconds, trying to drive in front of Christo, Steelers have it, Chase is on, Ferrara get us a stick to it but Dowd bursts into the zone, 10 seconds left as Dubot makes another stop, score of one of the most famous penalty shot goals in Steelers history, in the Challenge Cup final, and he can't repeat the trick here, Dubot saves once more, Trying to give the Panthers a lead in round three. And the puck bobbled, and then he fired wide. 
And Ciampini just drags it wide. Looked like he had to beat De Bell beaten for a moment. Oh, and he's hit the post. He had Greenfield out of position, but couldn't find a way to put it put it in. It's a big moment missed. Off the post from Levin. And now here comes Brett Newman at speed. And the glove save. And the Steelers go 0 for 5. And the Panthers now have a shot to win it with Jeremy Welsh. Panthers were two down late in the second period. They scored late in the second, late in the third. Can they score with the last shot of the shootout to win it? No, they can't. A perfect set of five from both netminders. The order will switch and will go to sudden death. Time for the defenseman to have a go. JC Brassard is the next shooter. And the poke check. And again, successful. Force Brassard too wide. And once again, the Steelers have a chance. They go back to Brendan Connolly. Can Connolly be the hero? Yes, he can! The wow, Steelers win it. <laughs> and what a relief. And he tosses his stick in the crowd right after. What a celebration. What a moment. Corey Nielsen's comeback was so nearly a fairy tale. But it's the Steelers who have the final say. The Panthers get a point. But the Steelers get all the glory. And Matt Greenfield, what a hero. Seven saves out of seven. Brendan Connolly has filled a few roles this season. Forward, defenceman, and now shootout winner. He will get to do the eddy. The only player to score during the penalty shootout. He had a go in round three and didn't score. But Fox trusted him again. And he repaid in full. And he will head off on the eddy. Most of the 7,631. Well, at least the Steelers contingent stay back to watch. And we can all drink to that. The Steelers are winners. Brendan, a really tight game tonight and so grateful the Steelers were able to get over the line in the end. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, I think we carried the play most of the time, 2-1. I mean, coming down the stretch, anything can happen, a shot on net. Um, credit to them, they had a good 6-on-5 there. They won a lot of face-offs at the end. Um, gave themselves a chance, and then seeing I shot it goes in. Um, obviously deflating, but you know that the, the the next point we need is a huge one. And um, I thought overtime was, you know, the guys were really pushing for it. Um, Greenfield played incredible in the shootout as well. And both, well, both netminders played particularly well. You had a couple of cracks at Alex Debo in the shootout. What was the difference second time round? Um, I think I just got to the spot that I wanted to. The first one, I didn't quite get um, to the center of the ice where I wanted to be able to shoot it from. So I thought, you know, next time I'm going to try something a little bit different. Um, he, you could tell he's pretty aggressive. Um, he, even though he's not very tall, he makes the net look pretty small, just the way that he, he challenges you and then moves back in. So I knew I wanted to get him moving and then maybe slide it through his legs. Is there any concern amongst the Steelers dressing room that it's another game that the Steelers have led late? but have only been able to take into overtime. We've seen it against uh, Guildford, Coventry, and now Nottingham. Closing games out is something the Steelers maybe need to be a bit, little bit, little bit sharper at. Yeah, maybe. I think, you know, that, that's ice hockey, really. Like, when it comes down to it, you, you, you try to do your best to, to make sure all your small little details are taken care of. 
and and you know sometimes maybe six on five we're not quite as aggressive down the stretch when we're when we're trying to close out and get pucks out um i'm sure we'll i'm sure we'll look at it i think it's not for lack of effort and lack of details the guys that are out on the ice are more than capable of getting the job done um but yeah it's something we'll look at you filled a few different roles this season as a forward on different lines and also as a defenseman how have you found it as sort of making that sort of transition from being the sort of the top line starter filling in wherever needed yeah i mean that's one thing i've said my whole career like i've never really played the game for points um it's naturally it's always come and you've always been i've always been the guy um you just try to work hard and try to do what you can to make the team win um more sometimes you know that is usually me being the top guy but Right now, there's a lot of guys that are playing a lot of good hockey, and I just have to—I just have to fill a role. Um, I'm more than happy to do that. Again, it's all about winning for me. That's all I'm here to do—is is have a trophy at the end of the year over my head, and I just try to stay focused with that. And a beer at the end of the game, and you got to have it on the ice this time. Yeah, beer. Hey, beers after the game in the locker room are good, but a beer on the ice in front of 8,000 people is even better. How long have you had that one planned for? I don't plan Eddie's, but I knew I knew there was some carling sitting in the in the the closet back in the dressing room. So I figured, you know, if if I was going to do one, I'll go grab a beer. And always sweeter against the Panthers. Definitely, way sweeter. Aaron, congratulations! A great performance against the Panthers. A great victory as well in front of a, a huge crowd. What was your take on the game? Yeah, I mean that crowd was awesome tonight. Um, obviously, a minute and a half in, there's that injury, which I think sucked the life out of the building a little bit early. Um, but I, I loved our start. I think we gave up two shots in the first period, played very stingy defensively. I thought we maybe made a little bit harder work of that game down the stretch than we we should have. We didn't take our chances, weren't clinical enough offensively. But our, our defensively, we've been outstanding um, for for quite a while here now. And you know, again, if you want to win trophies, you got to be ready to defend, and and we've been doing that very very well as of late so it was good for for us to get the two points and um it was great to see a huge crowd here yeah we deserve to be two up though didn't we 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 controlled the play oh yeah i thought we should probably should have been more that you know we're up to nothing with a minute and a half to go in the, in the period there pucks on our tape we rim a puck it hits the ref stays in the zone two bounces later it's in the back of our net you know what i mean that's just a little bit frustrating and then you know we give that last one up with five seconds which is always going to be disheartening when you give up a goal in the last you know seconds of a hockey game when you're up um you know same thing I, they, they call greener for putting the moorings off like he just makes a a save on the post and then sometimes the, the ice gets soft here and the nets don't stay on so tough call there and and did not close that game out in regulation but um you know what i mean i'm not gonna nitpick right now i'm pretty happy with the two points i'm pretty happy with how we played for a while now and um yeah maybe we'd like to see some more goals but you know, I, I think us playing the right way is more important. Overtime could have gone either way, couldn't it? Chances at, at both ends. Yeah, there was some good up and down hockey there. Goaltenders came out and made some huge saves um, in overtime. And then, you know, Greener makes seven saves in the shootout and their goalie makes six of seven. And you know, it was good to see Cons bury that and give us a win. Talk us through the Cons uh, decision, because you didn't use him last time in the uh, in the shootout. And he came, he went close first time, but then for him to get the win, a place went crazy for him. They love him, man. Yeah, he wasn't in the lineup that last shootout, which is why we didn't use him. Um, he's just, he's been such a key guy in shootouts and penalty shots for us since I've been here. He's, he's we do it every Friday. He's got three or four legitimate moves. Um, so he's just, he's one of those guys that, that that I'm very confident in in that situation. Um, it was, like I said, it was great to see him, Barry. Yeah, you don't get sentimental, but I think everybody here was just happy for him because he's had a he's had a tough 12, 18 months, hasn't he? And for him to get such a big goal like that, he's so important. Yeah, huge goal against you know I remember the the overtime winner five hole where he jumped into the crowd yeah. uh, a couple of years ago, which was great too. So, you know he's he's a guy that I trust in that in those situations and went went to him twice. A very tight game that could easily have gone a different way. Yeah, to be honest, I, I thought, uh, well, first off, Sheffield's, uh, they're good. You guys are really good, really good, uh, really good skilled guys, a lot of good players, and they gave us a lot of problems. But, um, you know, for having one practice and the guys coming in, I thought we looked really connected. I thought defensively especially, we gave Sheffield a lot of problems early, um, just outnumbering them down low. Um, some of the things, you know, aren't ever going to be perfect, but uh, I really thought we, we competed hard. I mean, the first goal, a uh, guy dropped a stick behind the net. I mean, if you're in a sword fight and you drop your sword, you're going to die, right? And they scored. Um, 
and then you know from there I thought we battled really hard uh, got some opportunities got a nice goal at the end and, and uh, you know penalty shots coin flip big blow to your own defense early on losing Dougie Legrand what can you tell us about his condition not too much at the moment um, I thought the five guys who stuck at it did a did a really great job and young Jordan Kelso went to back and played D um, and for someone who hasn't played a lot of D I thought he looked really good so um, good signs uh, obviously you know that that piece is tough when you go down to, to 5d against um, a team as good offensively as this but uh, you know what I saw from the defense especially is I thought there was this real battle um, real engagement physically and you know when I'd been watching before I hadn't seen a whole lot of that so you know what to be honest um, we didn't get the two points you always want two points but um, I was really impressed. I was really impressed with their level of connectivity, work ethic, compete, um, and and for just a short time, their attention to detail was pretty good. How much pride can you take from the way that the team battled back late in the second and late in the third? Yeah, as I said, uh, you know, when a team that has been as fragile as, as this one has been, um, for them to come together, uh, to stick with the process, and we've talked a lot about um, you know, performance and performing instead of just being driven by results. I mean, this is a results business, but um, I think if this team, their starting point is performing really well and continuing, just continuing to compete, then that those kind of performances will lead to results. And um, yeah, if they, they can stick with that, I'd be, I'd be really happy.